Hey Nerdy Knitters! If you're a new knitter and you've looked at those aisles of yarn and been a little overwhelmed, we're here today to decipher what you find on those labels. We'll look at seven different things you can find on a yarn label and how you can use that information for your next knitting project. But before we do, let me just say, hey, I'm Tanya here at Nerdy Knitting. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a knitwear designer, and my goal is to help you become a confident, adventurous knitter. Now, the first thing that you'll see on a yarn label is the company name and the yarn name. This is the easiest thing to see. It's usually in pretty big letters. Now the companies probably produce more than one type of yarn. So you'll see lots of different yarn names with that company name. One of my favorite places to shop is Knit Picks and they have a lot of different yarn. Stroll, Swish, Hawthorne, Dishy, the list just goes on and on. So you'll see Knit Picks on the label, but you'll also see the name of that specific yarn on the label as well. Now the next thing to look for on a yarn label is the actual put up of the skein. Now skeins can come in lots of different forms. There's hanks, skeins, balls, bullet skeins, lots of different ways they can come. But no matter how the yarn is put up, each specific skein will weigh a certain amount and you'll find that on the label as well. That's really important information, especially when you're going to be substituting a yarn in a pattern. You need to know how much each skein weighs. Now this can be listed in grams, in ounces, or in both. Now this is where things can get a little confusing because the third thing on the list is the weight of the yarn. And this time I'm not referring to the weight of the skein, I'm referring to the thickness of one strand of yarn, which is often called the weight of the yarn. So that's something to pay attention to as a new knitter. You have the weight of one individual skein, and then you have the actual thickness of one strand of yarn, which is also referred to as the weight. Now the weight, which we can also call the gauge of the yarn, you can see listed in two different ways. If you're in North America, you might see the Craft Yarn Council symbols here, and those will tell you how thick that strand of yarn actually is. Or a yarn label might not have that information, but it might say sock or DK, sport or worsted, Aaron, and those words give you a clue about where that would fall in this category of weight, as you can see from this chart here, where it tells you the different names you might see on the yarn label. Now the third way to discover the weight or the gauge of the yarn is to look for the gauge information on that label, which could be written out as a sentence, like this one, or it could have these little funny boxes where it shows the knitting and the crochet gauge for that particular yarn. Now this little gauge box has a lot of information included in it. Look for the little box that has the knitting needles. First of all, you'll see the knitting needle sizes and it's probably in millimeters and in US. It could say US 8 and 5 millimeter, which are actually the same size. It's not two different sizes of needles. It's the same size, just listed in two different measurements. You'll also see four by four inches or 10 by 10 centimeters. And that tells you the size of the gauge swatch that they're using. They're measuring a distance of four inches or 10 centimeters, which is the same. The last bit of information you'll see there is the stitch gauge and perhaps even the row gauge. They're giving you an estimated number here. You might have 22 stitches in those four inches. You might have 20 stitches in those four inches. That's the estimated gauge that they're giving you on this label. Now that's not saying you have to knit to this specific gauge, but this information gives you a clue about the manufacturer's intention for this yarn. Now if you look at this Craft Yarn Council table again, then you can see we have the symbols for the different weights of yarn, and then we also have a row that tells us the recommended needle sizes, and it even gives us a row for the gauge information. So if your yarn label doesn't tell you the Craft Yarn Council symbol, you can look at this gauge information to determine where it should fall in that yarn thickness category. Now I know this bit was probably a little confusing and if you have to rewind and watch this section again, because this is an important part of the information that you need for knitting successfully. You can't take a bulky yarn and expect to knit a sock pattern that uses a fingering weight yarn instead. They're just not comparable. So when you understand what all these different terms mean, then you can start interchanging yarns and substituting yarns appropriately. Now that we understand those two different variations in weight, to remember the weight of one skein and also the weight or thickness of that yarn, we move on to the next step, which is the yardage in the actual skein. The yardage or the meterage, depending on what's listed on the label. It could have both, it could add either one. Now this is something that's also important for substituting in a pattern, because you could have one yarn that has 120 yards in it, and then a second yarn that only has 50 yards in it. So they're not a one-for-one -one substitute. You're going to need more skeins of that second yarn. 
How do you determine that? Let's look at a quick example for yarn substitution. Let's say you have a pattern that uses Craft Yarn Council Medium 4 Worsted Weight Yarn that knits up to about 20 stitches to the inch, and the skein of the yarn that they recommend is 100 grams with 190 yards. But the yarn you'd like to substitute falls within the same category, but it only has a 50 gram skein with 80 yards of yarn. The first thing we need to do is look at our pattern, and in our example, it asked for three skeins of this yarn at 190 yards in each skein. So we just multiply those two numbers. Three times 190, it gives us 570 yards. So we know whatever yarn we're going to use, we want it to fall within the same weight category, but it has to have 570 yards of yarn. So then we can look at our sample yarn, and we know there's 80 yards of yarn in one of those skeins, so we're going to take that total, 570, divide it by 80, and that will tell us how many skeins we need to purchase. We technically need 7.125 skeins, so we're going to have to round that up to 8 skeins of yarn. So the sample pattern called for 3 skeins, the replacement yarn that you want to use, you're going to have to purchase 8 skeins. I know that can be a little bit confusing too, but once you do it a few times, you'll start to understand how you can substitute one yarn for another when you're looking at the yardage of the yarn. Another important factor that you'll find on yarn labels is the actual fiber content of the yarn. You can have acrylic, polyester, nylon for your manufactured blends, or you can have natural animal fibers like wool or alpaca or something really interesting like bison. Or you can have plant fibers like cotton, hemp, or linen, or any mixture of any of these fibers in that one yarn. Now the fiber content in the yarn will affect the next thing you'll find on your yarn labels, the care instructions. Different fibers have different care needs. Things like acrylic are usually machine washable and dryable. Things like wool, probably hand washable, and you might want to dry them flat. You don't want to stick them in the, in the washing machine and in the dryer unless the yarn tells you to. Now this information can be found, it's either going to be written out with simple care instructions, or it's going to have those weird care symbols that we often see in our clothing tags. I put a link down below that breaks down what these care symbols mean, so if you find them on your yarn label, you'll know exactly what to look for. But they can be broken down into four basic things, washing, drying, ironing, and dry cleaning. The washing symbols will show you whether it's machine washable, if it should be hand washed, and the heat level that's involved, and also whether you can use bleach. Now the drying symbols will tell you if it's air dry only, or the basic dryer cycles that you should use if you can use a high heat setting or something more gentle. Now washing and drying symbols are probably the most commonly found on yarn labels, but you might see the ones for ironing and dry cleaning as well. So make sure you check out that link to look for those symbols to see what they mean. The last thing you're going to find on this yarn label is very, very important the color. You'll find the color number, the color name, and then the dye lot. Yarns can come in so many different colors. They can be solid colors, self-striping, variegated, speckled, hand-dyed, kettle-dyed. The list goes on, especially as hand dyers find new ways to add dye to yarns. All of these yarns are dyed in batches, from big manufacturing plants where they have hundreds of skeins at a time, to small in your kitchen where you might do just a few skeins. So you would call this the dye lot. Now each color has a particular formula, whether it's in a big manufacturing plant or in somebody's kitchen, and that formula is reproduced every time a batch of yarn is dyed. But there can always be variances between each batch. That's why they have dye lot information. If you're going to knit a sweater, you want to make sure that your yarn is all from the same dye lot, because if it's not, you might end up with some weird stripes that you weren't expecting because there can be a variance in that yarn from one batch to the next. For smaller projects, this isn't such an issue, but if you're planning to knit a sweater, make sure whether you're buying them at your local big box craft store or online that your yarn is coming from the same dye lot. These simple things that you find on your yarn labels will help you choose the yarns that you need more successfully for your next project. If you'd like to look at this even further and look at how you can substitute one yarn for another in a particular knitting pattern, make sure you check out the video right here. Give this video a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you like to get nerdy with your knitting.